In these notes, we're going to look, as it says here, at instantaneous velocity. We're going to do it through our equation and understanding of average velocity. So, as a reminder, average velocity is displacement divided by time, so x final minus x initial divided by t final minus t initial. And to illustrate the point, I've picked a random function, x of t, 3 plus 10t squared minus right, 0.5t to the fourth. So the highlighted yellow equation is the highlighted yellow functions that we see down here. And all we are going to do is calculate average velocity over time intervals. And we are going to transition from an average velocity calculation to an instantaneous velocity calculation by letting the time interval become smaller and smaller and smaller around a given time. For example, let's look at the average velocity based on this position versus time function between 2 and 3 seconds. So 2 to 3 seconds. All right, well, we calculate the x final, all right, let's go up here and show you what I'm doing. It's x final, all right, minus x initial, and x final is at 3 seconds, so that's where I got the 52.5, so I plugged in 3 seconds for t and got 52.5 x final minus x initial, I plugged in 2 seconds for t and got x initial and then did t final minus t initial to get the 17.5 meters per second. That's the average velocity over the inter time interval from 2 to 3 seconds. Well, what if we go, as it shows here, instead of from 2 to 3 to to 2.2. Well, when we do final, right, 2.2, initial 2, we do x final minus x initial, 39.69 minus 35 divided by 2.2 minus 2 gives us 23.4. Well, we're just going to continue doing this because we want to know the velocity right at time t equals 2 seconds. So instead of going from 2 to 3 or from 2 to 2.2, we're going to keep going from 2 to smaller and smaller increments, and that's what I have shown down here. So here we've gone from... 2 to 3, here 2 to 2.2, but now let's go from 2 to 2.01. So instead of 23.45, we get 23.98. Well, what if we want to go right on top of 2 even more, from 2 to 2.001? We get 23.99, and I think you can see what is going on here. We are going to close in on approximately 24 meters per second right at time t equals 2 seconds, right? So that's the notion of instantaneous velocity. It's really nothing more than an average velocity calculation over a really really, really, and in math terms, really, really, really small means infinitesimally small time interval. And when we do that, we see, as it shows here, that our secant line, the line that intercepts the function at two points, now becomes a tangent line and intersects the function at one point. And the notation we have down here is the calculus notation that we will be working with later in the course after your calc teachers have given you a more in-depth understanding of calculus, but basically 
what is going on here is that our delta x over delta t calculus notation, the delta becomes a d, dx dt. And look what we have here. This is still final minus initial, even in calculus, final minus initial divided by t final minus t initial. In calculus, they use twos and ones instead of finals and initials. And just as we did above, we are taking the limit from t final to t initial to be infinitesimally small. So as t final collapses in on t initial, we get the instantaneous velocity for the example above right at two seconds. For us right now, as it says here, we are going to use, and get this into your notes, just use a ruler to estimate the tangent line, and then calculate, literally, calculate the slope of the tangent line off of the graph to get an estimate for the instantaneous velocity. And once we introduce calculus, we'll see that this calculation represents a first derivative of the function x of t, and we'll be using more fancy calculus language to do instantaneous velocity. But this page of notes absolutely shows us conceptually what calculus is doing when we go from an average velocity to an instantaneous velocity.